Hello there. This is stream 100. Yay! It's sort of a binary-ish day. It's 0110, and the stream number is 0100. So, strange coincidences. Yesterday was the day of nines. It was the 9th, 2019, and it was stream 99. So, we've continued the trend of interesting numbers. Tomorrow it will be the 11th of the first month, and it'll be 0101. So, <laughs> strange coincidences continue. So, in case you haven't seen this before, I stream this live on Twitch, and about uh, four hours a day, every weekday, I've been trying to get a game up and running. It's not yet playable, but it's going to be a multiplayer RPG. Hey there, Rally Monkey. Rhyme away back at Rally Monkey. Hold on. I guess I had to type enough. There we go. Yeah, so multiplayer game. And I was talking to someone, actually I was talking to Rally Monkey yesterday about this, that there aren't very many of this type of game. This may or may not be a good thing, but I really enjoyed playing Ultima games when I was a kid. And so I'm, my goal is to make a multiplayer version of that kind of game. It will be uh, just basic pixel art, retro style 2D. So we don't know of any games that are quite that, quite like that. It's pretty old school. Because it's multiplayer and I've never done a game before, but I have more experience in servers and networking, I have decided to focus my attention first on making a really solid backend server infrastructure. And I started streaming back in June by making my own web server, and I've been sort of using those components that I've been making since June in this endeavor. So the overall architecture looks like this. You'll play the game from your web browser. It will connect to the server back in through WebSockets. They're gonna, there's going to be a cluster of servers, multiple servers. They each have the same state. They're going to talk to each other through WebSockets. There's also going to be a special orchestrator server, which we're going to be working on today a little bit. Its job is to start new servers that are needing to join the cluster, and then stop old ones that have been removed. Hey there, Milk. Yes, you can see C++ templating question, metaprogramming question. Sure, go ahead. So this orchestrator needs to start up servers that join the cluster and take ones out that are, have left. So I'm going to be working on a lot of that today. And there's also some things we have to do about uh, ensuring that we always, uh, actually, this is more general, ensure, well, I should make another paragraph. What's not written here, which will be in the fourth paragraph in, soon, is uh, if I get r done with all of these things and I have time before one, I will be... Um, Filling in the holes. So there's a lot of holes right now in the algorithm. These guys. All these places where we have to fill in code. So I'll be working on that. And then I've reserved an hour at the end to play test another streamer's game. His streamer is John Games, and he's working on a game called Roots. And uh, he uh, graciously gave me a key for that. And also I'll be play testing it and giving my opinion on that. All right, let's look at this code snapshot. Let me look at it off screen for a sec. Okay, it looks it looks kosher. Hey, they're playing with scissors. Template auto value. Okay, so I've never done that. Yeah, I wonder is that something new in C plus plus seventeen? I've done I've done it this way. Uh, I'm kind of wondering why you repeated strange type twice. How do you implement strange type so that can instantiate with integer constants or other types? Well, what happens if you just remove this redundant one there? Oh, it doesn't like numbers. Um, I think you just have to do int. But you have to give it another type, right? This might be beyond me because I'm not an expert in templates. <laughs> um, hold on. 
I'm curious why. Shouldn't it accept that? What's the error? Is it just GCC? It's giving an error. I thought you could do that. I thought you could have an int for the the type name. Is it is it that we have a Ah, uh, that's what it is. Okay. Yeah, so the only way I know how to do it would be to get have two different templates. One for types and then one for constants. So there's probably a way to do it that I don't know, but maybe as a workaround you could do this. You could have two different templates. Hey, there are multiple pixels. No idea what, why that was there. You mean the Shegu? So yeah, if any viewer happens to know, this is a question from Melg1, and the the uh, question is how how would we get a template to support both uh, structures and constants? I don't. I'm gonna guess that you can't. You have to have two different templates. One which is using type name, one which is using the um, type of the constant you're going to templatize. That's my guess. That's my final answer. So, hope, hopefully either that works for you or you'll find a better way and uh, teach me. I don't know everything, of course. Templates are maybe a bit of my weak area. I did a little template stuff last night. I'll show you the the how far I go with templates before I get con before I get um uncomfortable. So I made this template function last night and it actually took me a couple tries to get it right. But I just noticed that every time I register a log entry uh command type, the code was exactly the same and the code that I needed to supply was a function. So I'm like, "Okay, I think I can make a template function if I'm careful." <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Meg Melg1. There's probably an answer. When you find it out, uh, let us all know. Or let's we could do a little bit of directed search here. C plus plus template. Uh, structure or constant argument. I misspelled structure. Struct. Uh. Okay, so maybe the problem is you have to use C plus plus twenty. And the uh what were we looking at? Godbolt. Does GCC eight point two support C plus plus twenty? If it did, I think this would work. Right? It's not though, because it's expected a constant of type auto. Yeah, it's um it's it, I bet this would work if we tried it with a uh, online compiler that supported C++20. Question is what version of C of GCC supports C++20 GCC support? Okay, it's some some stuff is an eight, but some stuff you gotta go nine. It would be uh, deduced. Okay, well it says it should be an eight, but what version of eight? I guess it'd be eight point zero. They do talk about non-type template parameters. So maybe, this is maybe a pretty esoteric question. Can a template parameter, like value here, be either a type parameter or a non-type parameter? C++ template. Can argument be either type or non Type. 
one of. You might you might be stuck to having to make two templates because if we read the, read this literally, it says it has it may be one of. So I think you got to pick one, non-type or type. So a constant being a non-type, a, a uh, structure being a type. It'd be cool if it supported either one. But you might run into issues anyway, if it, even if it, did, if it did work, because what are you going to do with value? Let's say value is a structure. Okay, then the way you'd use a structure is by referencing properties to it. I guess, oh no, you could use it, but the only thing, you, you'd be limited to what you could do with it. You can take the address of it. No, you can't even do that, because if it's a constant, you can't take the address of it. I think you'd be really limited in what you can do with value if, if it needed to support both an integer and a structure. Because what can you do with both? With It has to be some syntax that works for both a literal integer and a structure type. I'm going to guess it's... Um, you're going gonna to need two templates because the semantics are so different. Hey there, Captain Stupid. We're just investigating uh, Melg one's question, which, which is, can you make a template that works with either a constant or a type? And using auto for the, uh, for the placeholder type, which you can do... I guess since C++17, if I'm reading this right, and then it can be deduced in C++20, but it has to be either a uh, non-type or a type, which I'm interpreting to be you can't do it with just one template. thing is, if you try to write template unique pointer with destructor accepting both, well, you can't destruct a literal, so that doesn't make sense, does it? I guess it depends what um, what what are the two things it's accepting? Integral type, really? Hmm. That sounds kind of weird. It sounds like yeah. See, the, I don't think you'd use a constant type. Like uh, you had. Um, I keep uh, I keep closing it. You have. Um, you have this, so that becomes a constant. So what would you do with that constant? It doesn't make sense to try to destroy it. I guess I'm not understanding what you would do with strange type if it, if it was, uh, the argument was a constant. Hey there, Tim. How's it going? I just took a little side sidetrack there to uh, help out Melg1 with a question. And, oh, I'm sorry. Who else came in here? Multiple pixels. How's it going? Day four? Day four of your game? My fourth stream? <laughs> Does that mean all the, the 96 before that didn't count? <laughs> Maybe I'm missing something. What happened here? There we go. Yeah, so anyway, I'm going to work on the orchestrator a bit, and then at 1, I'm going to play Test John Games, Roots game. Oh, I get it. Nice one. Yeah, we were talking, I was saying earlier, it was sort of, sort of fe feels like a binary day. I gotcha. I'm slow today. The hey, rally monkey, you got to be faster. You got to, you got to like catch me on that. Hey there, HZ coder. Yeah, I be slow. That's what, you, what happens when you start getting gray in your beard. You get slow. Okay. So yeah, uh, if, you, if you don't really like coding so much, but you want to see someone else's game, I'll be playing John's, John Games' game later. All right. Drink coffee. Aha. I gave up uh, caffeine a while ago. All right. So yeah, I was just saying, um, this is pretty much the most complicated template that I still feel comfortable with. Templates well, have sort of a bad reputation in some circles, and so I've always tried to avoid them after getting burned by them early in my career. So, By the way, this is code that I wrote last night because I forgot to do it, 
And this is one of the reasons why at the end of last stream, things just didn't work. Now they kind of work, only we're not telling the um, orchestrator to start up this new server. Here, I'll show you guys. I need to start this up anyway, because it takes a while. So we're going to do npm start on the admin console. And then while that's chugging away, let's go and uh, start the, uh, s the cluster. So stage serve. So I had it, I'm having it print out more stuff now because um, I wanted to actually see the, the fact that it was pr a replicating state, which um, this was the missing piece. Without registering these two commands, it wasn't actually replicating them to other servers. So other servers were like, eh, I don't know what that means. I'll just make it a no-op command. So here we go. Still starting. NPM start takes a while. Okay, now it's going. So I guess I'll show this here. Uh, we can connect to the server cluster, and then we can actually see what it's doing. It's sending, um, it's receiving back success that every every server is up to date. And then watch what happens when I upload this new one that has four servers instead of three. It says, "Oh, sending a log entry. Story configuration. It's replicating it." It sends it to server 11. Actually, it had to send it twice, probably because it timed out. And then to 12. And then, oh, we got a majority. Advancing the commit index. Reconfiguring the cluster. We're adding a server. Yay. And then it kind of stops there. And that's because the orchestrator is supposed to kick in at this point and start server 13. Ser server, server 13 then gets the new state. And then we move on and uh, go to joint consensus. And then we move to new, con new configuration and we'd be done. So we, that's the missing piece today. So I need the orchestrator to actually clue into the fact that, hey, we need to start server 13. And we'll see evidence of that here. We get a warning unrecognized message. The uh, orchestrator doesn't know what the heck we're asking it to try to do here because it doesn't know about this uh, uh, command called uh, joint configuration. So we got to add that today. Yeah, Tim, I to do the same. Like I it, it's it's best used when you have something repetitive that only varies in one point. So here the only variation was the actual type to uh, of which to create to create the command. And all of these command types have the same base class. So it was it was very um very much a candidate for using a template. Okay, so orchestrator. Good news is it's already receiving the message. It doesn't know what to do with it, though. That's the only problem. Orchestrator is uh, a main program, so I don't use TDD on this. I just do it the old-fashioned way. And, oh, uh, that's right. I kind of need to refactor this guy pretty soon because it looks ugly. But at some point, it handles the reception of messages. Oh, crap. It's right here, and it's in the worst part. Um, okay. <laughs> Actually, where is it? This isn't right. Oh, I guess this is right. Where is it actually? Oh, and this is the orchestrator side. It's receiving a connection. Got it. Okay. So it, it will know who will it know who's connecting. Oh no, I got it backwards. It connects, and these are the messages it receives back. So this is where I want to put it. So we're gonna put that in here now. We're gonna do it now. So the type. I just noticed it's Pascal case. This doesn't quite match up with my other types, which are Camel case, but that's okay. Hey there, said who, 12? Did I write my own JSON parser? Yep. I did it way back in the day, which would be, hmm, right here somewhere. Stream 21 through 23. And then bug fixes afterwards. So, yeah. And when was that? Back in July? Wow, that was a long time ago. July of last year. 
it's not perfect, but it gets me what I need. I still I still have to occasionally do uh, this kind of thing where I say, hey, I want it as a string to a concatenate and all that stuff. So, yeah, way back before I even had a face cam for my stream. All right, so joint configuration. Uh, let me search for that as a string, actually, because we'll see the other end over here. So it's going to send us both the old and the new. Okay. So... Right now, where does it store the configuration? That's a question I have. Right there. Wait a minute, this is for one server, right? Okay. Where do we store them, the complete set of configuration? Oh, do we not save it? No, it returns it. Okay, never mind. Reconfiguration. Okay, there's a service run state. I got it. So I wonder if I can just do the, do the naive approach and just assign it. It's been a while since I worked on this orchestrator, so service run state isn't available. I guess hmm, that's only it's only in the run function. Huh. We somehow have to we have to we use that configuration in a bunch of places here. I guess it's okay that it uh, we can't change this part of it. This one, though, we need to do again. And I suppose that could change as well. Hmm, how am I going to do this? So this is a callback, right? Oh. Yes. Which I should probably... <laughs> This should be in its own function, not be sitting out here as a uh, lambda expression. It right now only gets the diagnostics. I guess the way we solve this is we give it access to the entire system configure system run state, and that should be safe, right? Because that service run state lives as long as the run function does. The run function will. I'll, what does shutdown do? It kills all the servers. Okay, I guess if we cleared this, and yeah, this will actually close, this will close all the web sockets, which destroys all of our context that we, um, that we give to the web socket. Yeah, okay, so it should be safe, I think. There goes nothing. So connect to servers, we're going to give it the run state as well. Actually, it gets a little bit simpler because then I don't need to pass that in. Let's get rid of that. Connect to servers. It's going to get the whole run state and it's going to be allowed to mutate it. <laughs> and uh, I'll get rid of that. Hold on. Uh, yeah, I knew I forgot a comma there. I knew it. All right. Mm. Indirectly changes it through its call through callbacks. Okay, how do I doc? I document service run state at some point, don't I? Yes, I do. All right, so I can get rid of these two because they're now they're in the service run state.
Let's get a reference to it. This you have to be very careful about doing, about passing by reference something. It's safe because I, uh, I know that this context, that this Lambda function will be destroyed before that service run state is destroyed. But it, you have to basically, you have to basically, this is a strong declaration saying that it's guaranteed to live long enough. Otherwise, it's, you'd be um, shooting yourself in the foot. Okay, so the service run state has the timekeeper in it. And there. Thanks for the follow. Void comp fill? Is that right? Let's see. You you don't have any more foots to shoot off? That's good. <laughs> I shoot myself in the foot and then I have to fix it. So my, my feet are always in pain. It had another parameter. How come it's not complaining? Oh, it is. No, it, that's just stale. Oh, maybe it's not. Oh, did I screw this up? Eleven oh nine. Oh, uh, yeah, I can't do that. You have to. You can only use. Um, you can't use. Uh, you can't dereference anything when you capture. So, just do this. Just get a copy of it and pass the copy in. This would be uh, plainer for me um, if I refactored this, which I'm probably going to do very soon because this is already annoying me. 1188. Okay, that's the one I was thinking. Like that one, I knew it was missing that somewhere. Because that was the other parameter that we now tunnel through the service run state. Oh, can't write it because it's running. We better stop it. Stop. And by the way, uh, because it actually partially executed that configuration change. I kind of got to clean up after it now. I'll show you what the uh, persistent state looks like. So every server has a journal, and there, there's the actual journal command. And let's see, if I told it it was JSON, it would be easier to read, wouldn't I? Especially if I did a format. So the command is a uh, reconfiguration, or start reconfiguration in term... Why does it say term one? It shouldn't say one. Because we are in whatever this says. Oh, we are in term one? Oh, that's right. I blew away the uh, build folder this morning because I updated Visual Studio. So it did completely reset the state of everything. Anyway, yeah, this, this is the term that w it was in when we made that command. And then we can check to make sure it got successfully replicated by going to any other server state. This are all on the same computer. You can see it's all there. It's all there too. So to, it's in a state right now where it's stuck because I haven't finished writing the code. So I just kind of hack it for now by re resetting all the stuff. Actually, I could just delete everything out of here. That'd be faster, wouldn't it? I'd just delete this folder. Yeah, sure. There we go. And then when I um stage and serve again it'll the orchestrator rebuilds those directories for me so there they are there they are again but now they don't have anything in the journal okay so those names you mean like the uh the name the realm name i had to give some name some like akundanal will be the world the name of the world although um, yeah that's right i have to have a name here because i might have a a virtual machine that has multiple worlds hosted on it and each world has to have its own directory are you talking about the names of my variables which are incredibly long yeah that's sort of like uh one of my signatures i have really long names <laughs> Check out these variable names, or these function names. They're huge! 
orchestrator. Oh, how I spell it out? Uh, I take advantage of the fact that I don't have to type every single character every time. I can use autocomplete most of the time. All right, so now that we got access to it, we're going to get the old configuration, and now we're going to need to introduce a new configuration, which I'm going to call next. And I don't think it was called next on the other end, though. It's just called new. Oh, well, maybe we'll call it new. New and old? I, I, I'd much rather call it current and next. Anyway, yeah, current and next is what it's going to be. So let's make a space for it. The next configuration of the game. Hey there, KHBS official. Completed your the structure of your project this morning. Is, you learned to scale. Nice. Incoming debit transmission file modified adhesion repository. Oh, that's the name of a class? <laughs> Wow. Okay. That beats me. The only names I have that are that long are unit test cases. Yeah, that's a bit much. Have you asked your coworker maybe to try to shorten it? Yeah. I agree. I agree, Tim. All right. Next configuration. So we're going to set it, and I suppose this is as good a place as any to call a function. Hmm. It's from a delegate. The problem is the orchestrator doesn't actually have a class at all. Just a bunch of state structures. What do we actually do when we uh, build? There's the build known server map. Where does it put it? Oh, there is a shared. I'm j I'm being I'm being dumb. There is a shared structure, and we're in it here. Is it the service run state? No, orchestrator shared properties. Oh, it's just that. Okay, it's shared, so we should pass that in as well to this uh, connect to servers. Uh, and, and this would be just shared, right? Um, yes, we do need to pass a shared pointer because it's going to give a reference to those callbacks. Uh, shared. I feel like I'm about to shoot myself in the foot. We'll find out. This holds the orchestrator state properties shared with with the other with worker threads and callbacks. Okay, because we're gonna we're gonna tunnel that in to here. And I'm going to use it here. Let's just make, let's make a function. So we'll call it, actually, I'm just going to move that function that we had build. And then maybe, maybe I will add those as members of the shared state. And then I don't need to have any parameters. How about that? So let's move this guy. I think he's a free function right now. He will no longer be free. He is caged now. And we're going to put him in that shared state. Yes. The name kind of is, I need to fix the name because we have properties and methods now. Maybe shared state would be better. It contains the private properties and methods of an orchestrator instance that may live longer. Yeah. Hmm. 
of the orchestrator that might live longer. Or how about it will say the private the properties it's not private, the properties of the orchestrator that might live longer than the orchestrator instance. Eh, we should say properties and methods. Okay. Oh, you know what? I already lost my clipboard. <laughs> Let me undo a bit to get back the function that I X'd out. There it was. Exit again. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> that was dumb. I lost I lost everything I just typed. <laughs> oh, well. I'm allowed one immense screw up a day, right? Let's do this again. So that's state. That's just properties and methods. Orchestrator. Yeah, that's act I actually got it quick anyway. Yeah, I'm only allowed one. On the second one, I don't know. I have to... I need to get something like what uh, another streamer has named Ski Dog. He has like a little uh, Nerf gun that people can like use their um, in-stream currency to activate, and it shoots them in the face. I, I should have something like that where it shoots me every time I uh, open my... Whenever I become vulnerable to um, to attack because I do something stupid. Some streamers have lights. Other streamers have little robots. I like the Nerf gun that shoots you in the face idea. Okay, the methods this. So we're gonna, we don't need any of these parameters anymore. Yay! Construct that based on information from the configuration, which we'll also put here. Yes. And it's, um, we're going to make it so that it's callable mo more than once. So do I need to, do I want to change this name? Build, does build imply rebuild? Like if you call build a second time, yeah, I think it does. So we'll say construct or update. So we'll do. You've wanted one of those for the last year? Yeah, you don't want it to hit the pets though. I think that's why uh, Ski Dog has it pointing directly at his face because then it's very unlikely to hit his cat. Yeah, we don't want that to happen. For save the pets, right? Okay, so let's update this called here. So this is now shared build the map. And I got to move, I have to move cl these, yeah, we'll move them. I do that right? No, I didn't. So setup needs. Hold on, maybe. No set. Yeah, setup is in the class. Right. <laughs> All right. Configuration. So let's build, let's move the configuration and the other. All these things that we know we're going to need there. Mm, let's put it up here. Okay, and what else does it need? It, we don't. We're already in shared, so we don't need to do that. We need cluster stage and image name. Image name is there. I guess we're just moving it in further. Oh, it's only while running. Well, okay. We can extend the lifetime of that, right? It's really just a constant anyway. We don't need the mutex to guard it. Okay, that's that one. Cluster stage. What's cluster stage? Oh, it's just a staging area. Okay, that's also a constant. I can put it there. All right. It's going to break a bunch of things. I can just fix them now. 
Um, it's not service state anymore. It's shared. I wonder if I even need the run service run state anymore in this function. I could then remove it. Actually, I could if I added back those parameters I took away, right? Yeah, the timekeeper, the HTTP client, maybe I will do that. So let's get them back. Let's resurrect them. How do I do that? How do I select those lines? Ah! <laughs> Okay, can I open that in another? I, how do I just revert these lines only? You're killing me, Gidlens. I want to copy that into... Okay, fine. Gidlens, file history. I'll get it from here. Here we go. So grab these lines and put them before the now, and then grab the documentation again. There we go. And then probably down at the bottom too, right? And then we don't need that, right? I'm guessing the service run state is actually going to go away pretty soon because it we already have a shared properties a, a shared state so I don't need that and there's one more it was in the HTTP client right yeah down here could check out P is nice for reverting yeah I I I'm kind of used to using graphical stuff these days for that. I know Tim, you're you're much more sappy git command line guy than I am. Yeah, we don't need to capture that anymore. Configuration is not part of run state. No, it isn't. We moved it. Dog barking overlay should take up the entire screen. I mean like this. <laughs> I haven't had to use that in a while. The dog's been um, kind of quiet during the day. You're not normally a CLI guy, but I've seen that you use the Git CLI really well. You seem uh, very comfortable with it. I'm not that comfortable with the CLI for Git. I use it. Come on, Flame of Scissors. I use it. I'm just not as good as Tim at it. <laughs> Right, so this, hmm. I have in mind to just remove this structure completely. So instead of service run state, it would be orchestrator shared state. Yeah, that's what happens to, I've been, I've been pushed by my viewers to uh, do certain things too, and that's why I'm streaming. Okay, so the shared actually it is modified. And it that isn't what it is anymore. It's this. Well, it means the same thing. So we'll replace all these references here. With shared. Okay. Yeah, I do I do stream to get yelled at. You know what really sucked was in the, my last job, even though I had a team, uh I I don't know, people uh were intimidated by me or maybe I was just an a-hole or whatever, but um I didn't get yelled at or any uh really any feedback of any kind and I never learned. I just got stuck. I prefer to get yelled at 
because then I will listen to the words and, you know, you just don't get emotionally charged by it. You try to figure out what's, what's, what's got them riled up, what they don't like, and it's just like debugging. You get to the root cause and you try to fix it. So if someone really didn't like something I was doing, I try to find out what is it that they really don't like and then what can I learn from that. All right, let's eradicate this service run state. We're going to just move these other things into the other class, because why not? Well, let's eradicate this one, and we're... I don't have any types anymore. We're just going to move it into the shared state structure. There's the new home for that stuff. There's a timekeeper, a nice web server, a web client. This one, actually, yeah, I have the to-do there. We don't use it, and we might not ever because Orchestrator only makes connections that doesn't receive them. So we might not need it much longer. Yeah, KHPS official, that's what I was in. E even though I had a team, I was practically working alone. Yeah, it, it kind of sucks. You should stream. You'll get feedback. <laughs> feedback is good. You just have to... You have to kind of get over the uh, the instinctual... Emotional reactions humans uh, get. You know, like, don't take it personally. Grow a thick skin. Those are the different phrases that maybe apply. Okay, we don't need that anymore, right? Why do I even make this a free function? We should just do shared setup. So if I move everything into the shared state, the only thing left in this class will be basically the handle that the uh, main program uses for the service. I guess that's fine. Actually, I can just do the uh, do that, right? And let's let's move shared setup. I have a feeling I'm going to be doing this. Everything that takes the state is just going to become a member of the state, which is fine. Because why not? What The worst that can happen is I'm shooting myself in the foot again. I need to, and that needs to happen to, for me to uh, learn, to learn how to do it better. Okay, the good thing is all those go away. Oh, wait a minute. How do I unselect? It selected one too many. Oh, maybe it didn't. Okay, so good. We're, I can just delete. Nice. And then this goes away. Feedback on the code, yeah. I want people to be saying that code looks horrible, and then it'll make me think, you know, probably time to refactor. <laughs> And when I actually get to actual game dev in a month, I'll really need the feedback, I'm sure, because I'll be, just like when I'm working on React, like when I made this silly little admin console, um, I did have to say things like, uh, don't don't judge this the style yet because I have no style sheet. But um, when I was code doing the code behind this and even just a, like what to put in here, I was looking for like feedback like, uh, you should use, like, one of them was, like, to, uh, help, someone help me out figuring out what control to make this in order to do the, uh, oh, it will, it won't work because it's, um, actually, that's a bug. If it's not connected, we just shouldn't do anything. Um, anyway, feedback like, um, what kind of control to put there and how to do it in React. Yeah, the control admin panel. That's, I'm, I'm hoping to, um, do all the, uh, DevOps through that. Okay. Uh, wait a minute. Oh, yeah, we don't have environment. Shoot. This one we should have. Hold on. Where is that guy? Oh, it is there. Shoot. Well, let's move it out. Well, so is environment. Yeah, let's move them all out. We, never, we don't need reporter moved out, though. 
Yeah, this is going to end up being just what the main service run function actually needs. Uh, that makes sense. So that moves to here. Doesn't really matter where I place these things. Might as well put it there. Now it knows about the environment. Okay. Oh, I moved that out. Okay, that means we need the... This constructor actually needs to go in the shared state then. Mm, makes sense. Hold on. Scroll, scroll, scroll. This should say properties. Did I not do that? Oh, I think I did, and then I had to, uh, I had to go back and redo a bunch of stuff. Okay, so this is now the class name. Orchestrator shared state. It has the diagnostics publisher, right? Good. I guess this one moves in there too. So there's process command line. Actually, hold on. Maybe I don't want to do it this way. Eh. Actually, no, th this will work. This will work. Yeah, kids give the most honest feedback yeah, because they don't worry about hurting your feelings. Hmm. Well, well KHPS official might need to let that idea germinate, Rally Monkey. You never know. You might have an incomplete idea. And you might need to fill it in first. And it might be proprietary. You might not want to tell want to tell us because it's secret. Okay, yeah, so this is just shared. Actually, you know what? Um, stuff like that command process command line parameters should go with, with these functions, shouldn't they? Yeah, I think so. Only rush should go into, be into shared is what I really need to share with worker threads and callbacks. So in all these other places, we just dereference sh the shared to get to it. So I'll go back and clean it up, that up in a sec. Yeah, you know what? I want to get to a state where my feelings can't be hurt by words. But I, that's probably way too ambitious, right? I I really admire people who have really thick skins and you can't hurt their feelings with words. I think that uh, gives you a lot of power and control uh, to uh, not allow people to um, make you feel bad unless you want them to. But it's sort of human nature. We're, all, we're always, we start out being very vulnerable to um, being hurt by others, right? What is it not like about this? I don't know. We'll get back to that later. Yeah, these are just all because they're shared now. It really didn't like this for some reason. Let's see. That, that might be stale. People can be hurt, so what I'm, what my, my ideal is unattainable. Yeah, I guess I'll just try my best to get as, as close to that ideal as I can. People like that usually get there by being hurt for a long time. Hmm. It's just that, uh, for a long period of time in my life, I was, uh, I was just very over concerned with what other people thought. And it can be kind of crippling. Or you just never want to try or say anything because you're you're just anxious about what other people will think. Yes, I I feel like that should go back. This should go back to impl. So in the impl class is anything we don't ne really need to share with uh, workers and uh, worker threads and callbacks. Yeah, I promoted it too deeply is what I did. Let's put it, let's put it right here. Uh, 
but people don't care about you. Is that in the context of the, your other, what you, what you said before? Hmm. I think it depends on your upbringing and your um, culture as well. For example, uh, some cultures, it's perfectly normal to um, to jab very very brutally other you know friends and family, and people just grow, grow accustomed to it, and it's no big deal to be like harshly joking. To the point of hurting people's feelings, normal like in other cultures, and 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 conversely, some cultures they're very people are very sensitive to other words, and they get really offended, the slightest thing. And sometimes it heavily depends on context. What is it not like about? Oh right, this moved into shared. Oh, wait a minute, yeah, shared. Right. Okay, get in there. No, recon read configuration isn't here. This setup, one of those ones I also promoted too quickly. Yeah. Let us move that. What's running? Yeah, let's. Yeah, I moved that incorrectly. It's okay. Moving it back is not that big a deal. Setup, we only need to do once. So that makes sense. So it goes in impl. Set up so process command line arguments, then set up, and then I can. Um, I just have to say shared. In a lot of places, actually, I took that out. Then I realized that it needed to go back in. <laughs> I'm kind of waffling. That's fine. This is shared. That's the one that doesn't need to be. Absolutely. Okay. I don't know if people, people don't really laugh at other people's code at all. It'd have to be so horrible that uh, you think it's horrible too. I think the worst you'd probably get is like, oh, this is hard to read. You should do this, that, and the other thing. And then at least the way I interpret that is I um, take the you should do this as like, let me look into those as suggestions and evaluate them on my own. I might have questions like, why do you feel it should be this or that? I am I am accessing these quite a lot, aren't I? I might find myself putting this back in because we might have to restart the web client, for example, if our config changes. Ah, everything is dereferenced to shared. That's the sort of a code smell that it really does belong in the shared, even though I only call it once. Okay, yeah, let's put it back. Change my mind. Put it back, sir. There it goes. Back, right back where we started. Shared setup, okay. Okay, that was a, uh, that one error caused a second error. <laughs> You're hungry for waffles? Go make a waffle. Or two, Valley really, Monkey. Well, see, I look at this code and I'm like, this would have been normal for me and I wouldn't have flinched at all this code like uh, six months ago. But since I've gotten a lot more feedback on stream, like especially that function, man, my God. I listen a lot more to... Uh, your feedback because you're 
you give it to me. And yeah, what am I trying to say? I've gotten a lot of feedback on Twitch to make me rethink the that, that this code is okay and come to the conclusion that it's not okay. It's a sign. It's okay to write this write it this way for me the first pass through, but the second pass ought to be that I refactor it. So like extract methods out of here. And the first candidate, the lowest hanging fruit for for lack of a better term, are these lambda expressions to just be their own functions, right? And that would heavily reduce the size of this function and make it easier to read. So I guess why I listen to that kind of feedback more on stream is is I, you're seeing my code, and if you can't, if I if I get a sense that you can't, that no one can understand what I'm doing, it's like what what am I doing? Like continuing, I need to make it at least readable to some people. Code you don't care about is just a bunch of text, yeah. But um, the goal, I think, the goal that I have is that. I break the functions down into small enough pieces that if you were to look at one piece, like reap dead servers, and you just looked at it for a bit, not too long, maybe a minute, that you'd be like, oh, okay, I know what it's doing. And then you can collapse that and you have you, you know what that function does, and then that you can kind of build your knowledge on what the rest of the program does to the point where when you get to the main program, which actually is set up pretty well, uh, you kind of know what's going on. We process command line arguments. We set up the diagnostics. Uh, we uh, go into the service main, right? Or we call run, depending on if we're uh, called from a daemon or not. And I think run is pretty good too. The main loop of the run is pretty good. It's like get the process list, locate the servers, uh, discard the information about the dead ones, launch any servers, connect to them. And we do that according to some interval. Like, I want this to be at least, at least through the function names, that people get at least a, a hint about what's going on. Yeah, so, but the bodies of these functions need to be refactored because they're just too long, and people... I don't know about you guys, but I, I rule of thumb I'm, I'm gravitating towards is to try to fit it... Every function should fit in one of these screens, which is roughly 30 lines long. Longer than 30 lines, and then... I think people just say TLDR, I don't understand your code. So even this is a little bit long. I might shorten this. One way I could shorten it, I guess, is to, um, I actually know. These are long because there's just a lot of parameters. Like I could collapse that into a structure, maybe. This stuff I could do in a function, because all we really need are these variables and how we get them out is sort of a different concern. So yeah, I could I could do some more work to uh, cut this down in size. So like, this is like a this is a candidate for refactoring a little bit just to get to fit on one screen. Like here's a good function. It fits in one screen very very easily. It's very obvious what we're doing. We're killing all the servers. We're sa saying we're exiting and we unsubscribe and we're done. Hey there, Phil. How's it going? Oh, I, I forgot to do this. I like to give shout outs to other dev streamers. So guys, check out Tim when he streams. He's got his own game engine he wrote himself in C++ and a really cool racing game on top of that. And I'm sure he's got other stuff too. I enjoy watching him because he also codes in C++ and you can never really assume, you should never really assume that you know something. So I, like, I might get into the habit of thinking I know C++, but then I watch Tim, and I'm like, oh, he does a C++ slightly different. What can I learn from him? So definitely recommend watching his stream as well. Oh, there's Ski Dog. Ski Dog, did you um, miss the part where I said, if I ever set up anything like uh, currency-based in my stream, it would be probably something like you have. Like, if I screw up in the code, then have someone shoot me in the face of the Nerf gun. I, I kind of, I'm kind of thinking about that more and more these days. <laughs> what I've, what I've uh, pl been pleasantly surprised about doing streaming is getting to know other streamers who do similar things, and we kind of form a, a bit of a, a super community. Each stream is its own little community, and then the streamers, when they um, watch each other's streams, they're kind of there's crossover, and it's kind of cool. <laughs> Yeah. 
I probably set it up and then like and then put out my own eye with a with the silly nerf gun. Anyway, um I'm getting too distracted, sorry. This got shared, right? All these got moved into shared. Because we're sharing them with our callbacks now. I don't know what the deal... Oh, is it because this one doesn't exist? Because that needs to be moved into shared? Probably. Yeah. So he's used by the other guy. He needs to be promoted. Hold on. Um, is it just the declaration order? Let's go. I should listen to the my compiler. Identifier not found. Okay. I, I think maybe it's the declaration order. I can fix that. I can fix it two ways. I could um, make a forward declaration, which I really don't like, so I'd prefer to just move this function up above the shared state. So let's move it up. Move it on up, function. Let's move you here. <laughs> I kind of skip over the flames in Stack Overflow. I go there when I need information. I'm really sort of a leech when it comes to Stack Overflow. To be a good Stack Overflow citizen, I should probably contribute back. And, and uh, I used to do this. Just spend like a half an hour a day or an hour and uh, just go through unanswered questions. The more obscure, the better. As lo as, as, I mean, the more obscure but yet tied to something you know, the better, because then you have a better chance of helping more directly rather than just parroting other people's answers. But um trying to give back by answering some questions is probably it's probably a good thing I should need to do again. Load file. That needs to be brought up as well. Yeah, these days I've kind of been a, a stack overflow leech though. I just kind of get what I need from there and I don't talk back. I do upvote answers and questions that help me out though. I think that's a uh, that's left over. Yeah, it's really hard to find things to answer. Uh, the way I think of it, if I just devote the time to look for it, that's uh, I'm giving back in, uh, by um, just attempting to help. But I don't like uh, parroting. Uh, hey there, Mike. How's it going? I don't like parroting other answers. I'll just upvote the answers that I agree with and. I think it's kind of annoying when you get two answers to a question and they're basically saying the same thing and I'm like, why don't you just upvote the other answer or merge the answers together? Work together, people. Ah, uh, yeah. So another another function needs to move. I wonder if I'm, I'm just moving them all in the end to the top. Probably. I bet you that one needs to move too. Kill doesn't though, right? Actually, kill might. Hold on, wait a minute. No, that wasn't the problem. Was it? Oh, it was. Yeah. Never mind. These do need to move. And where have I been moving them to? Right here. How to close topics when someone new doesn't quite understand how to ask the right question? Yeah, <laughs> you need those. You need that karma, right? <laughs> it's the same problem that um, I think that's a design flaw with those karma-driven systems. It's not too bad. It's just that people are sort of selfish for for the karma points. What if you got karma by upvoting an answer, or maybe you do. You should get karma for any kind of con contribution. You should get karma for just spending the time looking for issues to answer. I guess that would be hard to for the computer to figure out, though. Load file. Ah, yes, another helper. It needs to be moved up. Wait a minute, what happened to load file? Did I kill load file by accident? What happened to load file? Yo, GitLens, where's load file? Did I delete you by accident? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. 
Let's get you back. Um, hmm. Load files generic, right? Ah, yeah. Let's put it here. There, resurrected from the dead. Um, file, yeah. Build it. Okay, we're getting there. We're getting there, peeps. Oh, reporter isn't shared. Yay. Okay. Now we have things a little bit better place to handle this um, new configuration business. So we're gonna build. We're gonna rebuild the server map every time. I just need to make sure it does. It shouldn't destroy the information it already has. Okay, we're going through this. Shouldn't we go through both? So yes. Well, no. Hold on. Right for joint configuration, we want to form a. Um, we want to go th through the current configuration first, and then with the new configuration, we'll go through and we'll do the same thing, but only for the ones that we didn't already do. You know, what I find impressive are the people who on Stack Overflow who have like a gazillion karma points. And I, I'm thinking, is that all they do all day is just answer questions in Stack Overflow? If so, I'm very impressed. Okay, hmm, 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 hmm. This is all constant stuff. So maybe it's just safe to do every single time. I think we're okay. Yeah, actually, if we process the old configuration first and the next configuration second, then as the next configuration changes anything, it'll overwrite things that we need to overwrite. So it's this information we don't want to lose. We won't lose it though, right? Yeah, okay, so let's per let's first refactor the body of this, um, this part of it. So void, um, what are we gonna call it? Something based off of what I just pasted there, and we're gonna be passed in the realm config, which is a JSON value. What does this thing do? It, um, it, it collects information from the realm, in, in about the realm in the configuration and then builds up server, so it's build known realm servers build build known hmm. names i suck at names build known if this is building the entire map then this is building this is building part of the map based off of one realm right Build part of known realm server map. Or really, what we're doing is we're, we're God. What do I name this function? <laughs> That's that name sucks, but maybe I'll just keep it for now. Okay, and then it'll just give it a name. Oh, we need to pass the name as well, don't we? Okay, so realm name, realm config. Okay, so take the information from about the given realm and use it to update the known realm server map. So I need to take that and reduce it to a word that's better than that. 
eventually. This is the name of the a realm to process, and then the config. Mm. This is all the information about the realm. Stored. This is all the configuration information about the realm. Oops. Stored. Stored as a, as a JSON object. All right, so. The idea is we're going to call this twice now. Yes. Because we're going to call it with the next configuration. So now we will um, have the old servers and then go through the new servers, which might overlap the old ones. The new server information trumps the old server information and then possibly adds some servers. That should be good enough. I'm kind of curious to see what this does. Oh, happy streaming. Oh, before Mike goes, I should give him a shout out. Mike is another streamer here on Twitch who develops a game. His game is coming up very soon in 13 days. It's a Unity-based arcade platformer is what I've been calling it. And uh, it's a really nice game in that it you, you can play it for a challenge and you can also play it uh, casual. So check it out sometime. Happy bookkeeping in the meantime, Mike. <laughs> All right. So actually, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna run this and see what the heck it does. So the console's still running there. And we're gonna stage and serve the cluster, which means that the admin console should pop up if I reload it. There we go. Come on, connect. You can do it. There it goes. I wonder why it took so long. Anyway. We can then be brave and tell it to upload the new config and see what it does. What did it do? Ooh, look at that. It's confused though. It launches it and it keeps dying. Feels bad, man. <laughs> I wonder why it's dying. So the fourth server is being launched. And actually you can see more information here. Change configurations coming in. Start reconfiguration, reconfiguring cluster. Right, the realm server, the orchestrator is um, is trying to launch it, but it keeps dying. I guess we should find out why it's dying. I wonder if it's because it the code isn't copied over. No, look, the, it copied the code. Is its config wrong? Oh, the config might be wrong. Yeah, look at that. It's got the wrong configuration. Okay, I think I know how to solve that. Saw a YouTube video where a guy said in the video that you would never get a development job with a low Stack Overflow score. So I don't know if Rally Monkey is still here, but he messaged me privately uh, between streams about a similar YouTube video. And I don't know, I think it's kind of disheartening. Some Some videos really get you depressed if you're like, let's say you're looking for a development job and you watch these videos that are saying, you'll never get a junior development job. These days is too hard. Or they'll say like, you really have to scrub the floors for a year before they even let you touch a computer. And uh, yeah, I don't know. It just seems so kind of wrong. Um, maybe it's sampling bias. Maybe the person who made that video had too many experiences where people he knew didn't get a job and he kind of uh, correlated that to their low stock overflow score. I don't know. It doesn't seem right, though. Scrubbing the floor. Yeah. That was literally what the other YouTuber said. That Oh, did Rally Monkey already talk about that? And I missed it. No, he didn't, but... um. Yeah, he said that was literally in the video Rally Monkey linked me to, was um, that he, he said, in most junior development jobs, you'll have to scrub the floor for six months or some such nonsense. And it was like, come on. All right, so the problem is server 13 is launching and it's like, wait a minute, I'm not in the configuration and it crashes, which is really two problems. It shouldn't crash, but really we should be telling it what its configuration is. 
I'm actually more interested in solving the problem about it crashing. So we can um, actually we can arrange that right now in the debugger. I will take this one and copy it to here where it will actually I think I know what it is. It's zero based indis indices and if we tell it index three, it will um probably crash because it's gonna go outside the range of uh I already closed it. <laughs> It's going to go outside the range of this array here and uh, probably return null stuff. Now let's see what happens though. So select it and we'll run in the debugger. Let's go. It crashed. Okay, why didn't it why did it not hit a breakpoint though? It just ended with memory leaks. Okay, it was it horribly stopped. Did it even run? I guess I should um, go to its uh, main program and see what's going on. Ah, Realm server host main, right? Okay, so let's just step through it and see what happens. Kind of disappointed that it didn't hit a breakpoint. Yeah, Remy, Remy, uh, Remy. I always get your name wrong. I'm sorry. I felt the same way. Like, how can they have a job and do uh, Stack Overflow so much? I guess I'm of two minds. One is that I'm really impressed that they can get so many um, questions answered. But on the other mind, I'm like, wait a minute. What do they do for a job? How do they do this? Okay, so let's see what point it crashes. Starting up Executor. Here we're going to start the journal. Executor mobilized. We set up the... Oh, here we go. It just exits. Oh, that's bad, too. Because we didn't do demobilize. Hmm. I bet that's what it is. It's... There are other threads running now, right? Don't know what they're doing. Actually, are those our threads? Let me see. Restart. Actually, we start with threads already. I wonder whose threads those are. Standard library threads? Anyway. Uh, what happened? I hit uh, F10 and it did something bad. I don't know. Okay, those threads aren't ours, but um, yeah, I can I can understand that bad things would happen if we just exit here without doing this. Oh, wait a minute. No, we didn't mobilize until there. Oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> Uh, maybe the executor mobilize. No, no, that should be fine. Why would this leak? Maybe because we started the journal and didn't stop it? Well, let me put a note here. I think it's it's not crashing, it's just leaving early because it can't find its web configuration. But let me put a mark here. Code smell. Oh, uh, we get... Oh, it's not really a code smell. Memory leaks happen here. So, um, we probably have a circular dependency uh, caused by um, connecting components together and then uh, just exiting without um, cleanly separating them. This is a sort of a weakness I have. I can get stuff running, but the shutdown sequence is not always clean. And it's not that I have circular dependencies where they can't be destroyed. And so there's no way to, to prevent a memory leak. It's more like if the shutdown sequence, probably this guy, um, actually it's not that. I don't know what it is. I must have something in this setup that is... Um, preventing uh, RAII, which I try to follow, from properly um, deallocating all memory. So I really don't feel like fixing that now. Let's fix the other problem, which is it's not getting its configuration. So we can fix that more easily in the coordinate, in the orchestrator. So we're, it's, it's where we um, copy files around. Let me find that. It's not connect to servers. It's like launch servers. 
launch servers. Is this it? Yeah, there we go. Okay, this is a problem. Right now, it's giving it its own config file. That's not good enough because we have two configs. Don't know if you're looking for ideas for your YouTube channel, but you really, really, really appreciate more videos dedicated to CMake. Okay. That's interesting. I actually got a... Uh, invite on LinkedIn this morning. Someone wants me, some, some company wants me to make CMake um, intro videos. I'm kind of surprised. I wouldn't think so many people would care about CMake. But let me put that on the list. More CMake videos. And I'll put our comment from Phil in there. Such a clever name, Phil. Such a clever name. You're begging me. <laughs> Actually, yeah, Phil, if you have certain aspects of CMake you'd like see you'd like to see demonstrated, let me know. Okay, you already have them there. Third party libraries, multiple make files. Okay, that's two ideas, right? Using third party libraries. Multiple CMake. I'm assuming you mean CMake lists. Files. Anything else? They're all horrible quality? Really? We can fix that. We can do it. Okay, the problem here is that there is. The orchestrator is, is stuck to using its own configuration. When does it move to the new one, and when does, what does it tell new servers? It's got to seed it with the new config somehow that has the right configuration. I think we have to change how this is done. Instead of making a blind copy, we have to use our own configuration. That actually makes more sense. So we'll remove this from the list of files we blindly copy, and then we'll add a function here to um, save to... Uh, Clone configuration, that's not what I'm going to call it. Uh, where are we? Okay, so it's... Clone configuration. We'll just make another function for it. And we'll have the server destination path. That's what we'll do. We'll make a function that does it. Const standard string. Uh, what did I call it? I forget. Server destination file path. Or we'll call it path for short. Yes, I'm definitely taking suggestions for tutorial style videos because I made two now and they are the most popular videos I have on YouTube, which makes me feel good because I like helping people learn. Uh, one of the things I toy around with in my head is someday being a teacher. I don't, I'm not serious about it because I know teachers have a lot of stress and don't get paid very much and really I only want to do it not, I don't want to do it for the money I just want to do it for the joy of helping people learn and so it seems more appropriate to uh, to just make videos and see if people want to want, want to watch them great so yeah I've been collecting this list it started out as an idea of like a coding tip of the day but really it's tutorial video I ideas Coding tips slash tutorial video ideas. So I made one on request from... Who was it? Gadam. He requested a video on Google Test Setup, so then I made, I made the one you'll see here. So yeah, accepting ideas. And the other reason I would do it is I, I could give it to my kids if they ever want to learn programming, or my friends who might want to learn it. I know Rally Monkey's learning programming, so he'd appreciate it. So yeah, there's a lot of a lot of good reasons to make it. You name another YouTuber? Sure, that'd be fine. I can watch his videos to get uh, ideas on how to make them, or just promote his videos. If uh, I get questions on certain things and I already know of a video, that'd be great. Because part of teaching someone can be just connecting them to the right information. So 
Yeah. Sounds awesome. Fire away your links. Give me your best shot. You do... You got most knowledge from Linux, Unix sysadmin. That's cool. So do you have a... Uh, what is it? You have a long ponytail. Because that was sort of a joke back in the day is... Um, you weren't really a Unix sysadmin unless you had a long ponytail. I don't know if you guys have heard that one or not. Maybe it was just my circle of friends. <laughs> it just seemed like every Unix sysadmin we knew had like a long ponytail. Maybe it was just, just like a thing. Cool. Thanks, Ramy. Let me uh, bookmark that. I'll put it up here. What is this all, all under? Coding tip of the day? Okay. Other YouTuber who does this. And paste. Thanks, Ramy. R.W. Grimm. I already follow him, but he's mostly working on Parrot, right? Does he record videos? Hey, hey there, Buff Seagull, by the way. All right, so yeah, this is going to solve the problem we have. Take our current configuration and provide it to a Realm server. Really, it's more generic. And store it as JSON at the given path. Path. This is the path to the directory in which I store the configuration. Oops, I don't want that. As a JSON file. Oh, you're saying um, Grim has the ponytail. Well, he uh, qualifies as a sysadmin, right? Probably. I bet he knows all the things you would need to know to be a sysadmin. So there you go, there's one data point. Visual Studio. Hmm. Visual Studio isn't bad. Oh, did you guys uh, get a survey request last time you updated Visual Studio? I got one this morning. It wanted me to tell Microsoft, how do I usually use Visual Studio? So my answer was, I try not to these days <laughs> because I really like VS Code a lot better. I can run it on Linux and Mac. The extensions are a lot nicer. The only reason I go back to Visual Studio these days Actually, I say it in this command. I should just do it. I go back to it if I need the uh, more advanced debugging tools. But really, I have no other reason to go back to Visual Studio these days. Even if I was doing C Sharp, although I guess if I needed the designer tool for WPF, I'd still go back to Visual Studio for that. But I actually asked them, could you guys put the debugger from Visual Studio into VS Code? Uh, K, thanks, bye. <laughs> they probably won't read my feedback, but hey, worth a shot, right? Um, I'm going to cheat a little bit because the executor does this. I'm just going to copy from the executor. It's got, it's got the code already in here. This is exactly what I want. First, okay, first we need to figure out which configuration. I think what I'll do is I'll say, we'll start with the... Hmm. I could use raw pointers. I hardly ever have a chance to do this. So let's do a, let's be, um, let's try to be clever here and use a pointer. So we'll begin by saying the configuration is the um, shared configuration address of. But then we'll say if configuration get type is JSON value type invalid that means we don't have actually no we're going to be optimistic try the next configuration first if the next is invalid we'll go and use the first the uh, old so configuration then we uh, we need to make a file system apps uh, my apologies for for using my own homegrown file class but i like it so we're gonna it's gonna be named path plus slash config.json, right? And then create it. If we can't, then, oh well, we tried our best return. Otherwise, it's configuration to encoding. 
write it, and we're done. Ship it. You haven't used VS Code in ages now? Or you haven't um, used Visual Studio in ages? You use Visual Studio by editing selfies for Snapchat? That's interesting. <laughs> 1.30.2. What are they up to now? Visual Studio. What's what's VS Code up to? 1.30.2. Okay. But Visual Studio is the one that keeps wanting to update itself recently. 15.9.5. Yeah. Oh, are you going to say, Phil, that you use Visual Studio, what is it, 2008? Did they even have a, or Visual Studio 8? <laughs> no. I had people at my last job who just wouldn't move to anything new. So they'd be like on Visual Studio 2008 or whatever it was, 2000, uh, Visual Studio 8. And they'd be complaining about problems. I'm like, you know, you wouldn't have these problems if you used new tools. They'd be like, oh, I don't have time to, ins to install the new Visual Studio. I'm like, well, you're... You, that argument becomes more and more feeble as we go because you're spending time now trying to overcome your problems. Add up that time you're spending. You could have invested that better in just getting newer tools. Emacs. I used Emacs for a long time. Emacs is a great editor when you are on a text console. I think. But the problem I had with Emacs, my, um, I, had, I had trouble with my fingers because you use, send, tend to use a whole bunch of Control, Alt, or Shift, and um, I had bad keyboard habits back then. All right, so this clone configuration. I said ship it, right? So is it trying to... No, I need to reference it. This is undeclared? Oh, it's inside of that. Oh, for each server, so we should do... Hold on. Why is this outside, actually? That's a file path. We need the staging directory. Hold on. Yeah, we just need run server stage. Yes, that's the that's the right directory. You can't switch to VS Code because the modal editing isn't good enough for you. Ah, oh, you have high standards, my friend. What are we at 15 of? I don't know what the 15 means. Oh, Visual Studio 2015. Is that what you're saying? Hmm. Anybody tried out the latest Visual Studio 2019? Someone was asking, does it have the uh, multi-select, like that thing where you can change? Someone asked that on Adam's stream yesterday. And I think the answer was no, and then the follow-up was, well, feels bad, man. <laughs> Such a useful feature. Okay, let's let's just do it. Uh, I need to see if we're in a good state to try this, actually. I might have to blow away this stuff. Yeah, so it's it's already got that in the journal. Yeah, let's let's blow it all away. Adam nuke the whole game, and then we run it again. Let's see if this is worth... Let's see if this works. Okay, launch the initial server is fine. That's a, always a good sign. And server 10 is our leader now. Let's go to the admin console. And we will... Yeah, this still has the new config ready to go, so upload. Here we go. Let's, let's make, make it threshold 2. Go. Ooh, what's going on? Why are we getting a lot of connections from, I'm presuming, ser server 13? Can we talk to server 13? No, it appears to be dead. Hmm. Interesting. It's misbehaving if it's running. Let's see what's going on. Ah. It's trying to start elections. And what? Why is it making so many connections? That's weird. 
Let's see if I can try to understand what's going on here. We launched server 13. Okay, we're receiving a lot of connect. It's connecting to all three servers constantly. Why is it doing that? Listening on those ports, that's good. It's up and running. It's connecting. It got a connection established, but then it's connecting again. I guess it's the one misbehaving. It's trying to contact them constantly. Wow. I didn't expect that at all. And then we killed it. <laughs> and we launched it again, and it started... Okay, so it... Yeah. Why would it const constantly make try to make new connections to the other three servers? Oh, maybe it has something to do with this. Is it because I never said okay to the Windows firewall? I wonder. I said okay to Windows firewall. Let's try again. Blow the realm away. Goodbye realm. Nice knowing you. Start the new realm. We can actually see it here. Got three three instances there. And then when I launch, well, upload the new config to the leader who's still 10. Boom, there we get the next server starting up. Yeah, it's going berserk with making new connections. Why? That's strange. Huh. I don't know. What's the best way to find out? Actually, we can look at postmortem. We can look at what files 13 had. Uh, yeah, I should really have it printed, format it before it writes it, or as it's writing it. Well, the good news is it got the new config. What about the other servers? All right, it should. They should not because they are not relaunched. Although they should have it here. Yes. Okay, that's good. Okay, so there's one entry in the journal. Yeah, so it's stuck in this stage where server 13 needs to come up and accept, it's not accepting the leader or, um, or replicating that entry, so it's never actually joining the cluster. It's supposed to start up as a non-voting member. That's what's supposed to happen. It's voting for itself. That's what's happening. Hmm. Actually, when I think about it, how does it know it's supposed to vote or not? That might be a bug in the design. It's supposed to start up and then somehow know it's not a voting member yet. How much time does it take to learn C++? It depends on how much you want to learn. Uh, you could probably learn basic programming in a, in a few hours. But if, you're, if you want to make like a, a server, for example, it might take a, a bunch, bit longer because there's a lot, of, a lot of prerequisite knowledge. So you need to know sockets, for example, how to make and receive network connections, uh, how to read and write files, how to do... Uh, how to make threads. So this is, there's a bit of stuff you'd have to do to make a real a program that you'd find useful in a server level, like what I'm doing. But basic programming like Hello World or Blackjack Game, whatever, what, what I usually recommend people start when they're learning, it, it doesn't take too long, maybe a couple hours. Especially if you know another language already. Yeah, turning it off and on again. Um... I need to go back. Actually, let's let me let me think about this. There were some tests I had set up for when it's a non-voting member, right? Non-voting. Maybe it wasn't here, but in Raft. Actually, it would it would be in Raft. 
non voting ah uh, yes so 13 gets this configuration but we somehow have to mark that it should only make give that to raft Actually, I think what I need to do is put the raft configuration into this conf into this file. That would make more sense. Yeah, let me think about it. I need to take a short break for uh, uh just to use the bathroom. I'll be right back. Hello, I'm back. Actually, have an idea what I want to do now. I think it's based off of what this, these other servers have in their states too. So they still only have three servers in their config, but they have a new config which has four. If we made sure 13 was set up the same way, where config had three, and then there was a new config with four, we could set up the scenario where when it launches, it sees that both exist and then just knows right away it's in joint or that it's moving towards joint consensus and that it's not in the cluster to begin with. So let's arrange, let's have the, let's do the orchestrator part first, which would be a, just a slight change uh, to the one I just made clone configuration. So there we will write two files. And let's make, actually, where I copy that from would be great. This one. I'll just take this as helper and take it completely, um, copy it completely over here as um, uh, an out uh, free function. Oops. Hmm. Wonder if I should be using this. And then um combine it with this load uh, oh no, that's load, this is right. Never mind. Getting confused. In fact it really uh belongs to further down here, right? Yeah, let's put it here. Okay. Actually, this is copy-paste error. There's no return value from this. It doesn't return. What did, What was I thinking here? I just, I didn't fit, fill this in or something? This is a file, right? This is, this is the JSON value to encode and write to the file. It ought to be here. Okay, that makes more sense. Clone configuration. Yeah, so what we'll, I think what I'll do is, so we're going to remove this glorious pointer out instead. We will say if that is not equal to invalid, then we'll write it out. So write JSON to file. 
Let's make the file here. It's new config. Shared next configuration. And I think we're all, should we just do the same thing for the new one? It should exist. So that the check is sort of silly, but it looks better to me if I do it this way. Hey, Romania, hey, how's it going? I'm getting uh, this uh, orchestrator here to start the, a new server with the correct configuration. And that, there's no reason to have these out of order anymore, is there? <clears throat> okay, so this will do one step. Oh, what's wrong with my voice? Excuse me. A frog in my throat for a second there. Just finished work. Nice. Okay, let's try this out. I blew away the last state of the server, right? Cool. So we will stage and serve the new cluster. We'll see right away it creates the state for all three. And we're going to go to our admin console and we'll say upload the new config. It says we're changing from that set to the new set. And then, yeah, it looks like 13's dying. Like it was dying before because it doesn't know how to handle starting and joint con con consensus. But uh, what, I, what I really wanted to see was, this, I can stop this now, that it has the same, con it should have the same config as the other three. So that has three in it. I'm actually, I'm going to fix this before I go much further. I don't, I don't like that to keep reformatting it. It has three in, and it also has a new config with four in it, right? Yeah. Okay, so let me fix the formatting thing because it bugs me. That's a one line fix. Here. It is two encoding, and then we can, there's an optional thing you can pass encoding options. So JSON encoding options. And we can say, there are a couple things we can set in there. Pretty true. This is my own class, by the way, this JSON class. Um, indentation levels, re-encode. I forget what these mean. Spaces, four. Isn't that the, oh, that's already the default. Wrap threshold, num indentation levels. What's re-encode? Disregard any cache encoding. I think we want to say true for that. Escape non ASCII. Um, no, I don't need it to. That one's the default, right? Okay, let's try that. Hey there, Ken Comatics. Eh, clumsiness here. There, there's my wave. Kankomatics I owe a lot to, by the way. When I was, uh, I don't know, a slightly younger streamer, like a month ago or so, I didn't have any command setup, like this one, for example, that tells people like what I'm doing with Google Test and test-driven development. And Kankomatics really helped me out by um, giving me a, a pretty long list of suggested commands and some other feedback as well. So I really appreciate Kankomatics for helping me uh, become a better streamer. It's one of the things I was uh, I should have picked up by myself, but I don't know why. But by watching other streamers who are really good, like Adam, is that to help moderate the channel, they uh, set up commands for um, frequently asked questions. And um, yeah, no problem, Kankomatics. Uh, you, you have helped out tremendously. You are the VIP of VIPs, I think. Right up there with playing with scissors, if you can believe it. <laughs> playing with scissors helped out making that uh, wave emote, by the way. So yeah, really appreciate you guys' help. It's helped me tremendously as a streamer. All right, I was going to see if that worked. Uh, wrong. I hit F7 in the wrong screen. <laughs> Phil, help, you help too. <laughs> You're helping with your 
awesomely clever name, hint, hint. <laughs> All right. Right, stage and serve. All I just want to do is run that again, and I want to see the configuration is nice and clean now. Oh, look, 11 got to be leader this time. So we got to tell 11 to upload the new config. Boom, there it is. And we can look at here to see what it looks like. Oh, I might have forgotten to wipe that out. No, no, I did. If I didn't, I would have seen that it um, was in uh, term two and not one. Okay, so let's look. It didn't do it. <laughs> oh, well, I tried. Um, why didn't it print, pretty print that? Why indeed? Don't you want to print it out pretty? pretty? Oh, did I put it in the wrong place? Was I just dumb? I was just dumb. Look at that. That I put in the executor. I guess it it can go in both places. Why not? We deserve to have pretty printed. So the executor writes the journal, right? No, it writes the config it writes the config files after we switch. So we should see that in these other servers, new config. No. Hmm. And okay, I don't understand then. Oh, it mm, that's not it either. Shoot. Well, <laughs> I'll keep it there, or should I? No, let's move it. Let's let's put it where I intended it to go. So that goes here, and then this one goes back in executor. Blow away the old state. Adam nuke that guy, and then we'll try again. Stage and serve. C++ in web browser. I'm missing the context a little bit. <laughs> oh, that's the worst when you write functions and you forget to call them. That happened to me last night. I forgot to call register log entry, and I had worked yesterday to, to do all that, and I just forgot to call it. This one. I didn't write this, and I forgot. And so nothing was calling register command type. I felt dumb when I realized that. Okay. Wait a minute. I Did I forget to control C? Let's, let me start over. I'm getting myself confused. Delete. Stage and serve. All right. Actually, these files are pretty printed, aren't they? So I think we're good. So connect to 10 and upload. Nice. So what does 13 have? Oh, look, it's nice and pretty printed now. Good. Problem solved. Oh, there's a super secret private key. It's just a, a self-signed certificate. No leak. I would never put the uh, real keys and stuff here. I'm not that dumb. Well, I, maybe I was dumb before, but hopefully I'm better now. Boga leak. Yeah, this is just, you know what I did? Um, because I always forget how to do these. I actually made a script called um, like make keys or something where I put it. It was in like test, oh, outside here. Really handy to keep these around, these test local hosts. So I actually made a make it because I can never remember these steps, right? Open SSL, uh, request a new key, and, and an end certificate X509. It's just very obscure how to how to say how many bits, how long to make it um, go until it expires, and then how to um, put in the so the, yeah the password's password by the way. <laughs> how to make a um, an encrypted, well, a, a symmetric encrypted key, you know, one with a passphrase, and then how to get the um, public key out of it. So I just made it a script, and so um, now whenever I, every year, I'll just rerun it to regenerate my test keys. 
Very useful to have this. Um, all c oh yeah, and the config is useful too. This is how you um, put in the common name, and you can pick your um, default uh, hash algorithm and default number of bits that way. So very useful to put in a script, and kind of kick myself for not doing this years ago. Bash alias? Well, I've been only running this on uh, uh, Windows, so no bash alias for you. No bash alias for you. <laughs> We're getting to call a function you've written as a daily occurrence for you, Tim? I guess that's true for me, too. Yeah, a buff seagull. Unordered map has come up before, right? I just um, have never really needed to go there. You want to make my dashboard look better without actually having to do much work? Do something like, okay, let me um, let me stash that. By the way, did you know we're on stream one hundred? It's a very binary day. It's my fourth stream ever. I've only done four streams. Thank you. All right, anyway. Pretty printed. Maybe it's a good time to check in. <laughs> Should do this more. Oh, that's still trying to run. Okay, let's check in. Um, What did I change? Just the ma okay, just the master repository. Or just the main repository, I should say. My microphone's not quite right. I need to screw it in more. I'm contemplating going back to this. Because the microphone's a little bit more constant, even if I turn my head. But I use this mic mostly be, uh, because my kids are making a lot of noise and this one uh, really cuts down the background. But I'm contemplating moving back for my stream to um, headphones, headset. Hmm. Yeah, let's check this in separate. Realm server host. I want something bigger. See, I've never heard of these, so I want to look them up later. Actually, I set this up. I think I fixed this. I can just do paste. Yeah, it's so much nicer. <laughs> so, um, Phil, you got to work in the off by one joke into that and make it like a multi joke. <laughs> there are one one. There are eleven kinds of people who understand binary. <laughs> Okay. What 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 am I doing? Ha <laughs> keyboard slip and I think I killed my uh No, it's still here. Okay, this was make a reminder about leaks. Okay. There are currently memory leaks if the realm server exits early. Leave a note about it to fix later. All right, executor. This was a documentation bug. Oh, hey there. Constant and on top? Sounds very familiar. Were you here before, like re yesterday? Sometimes I lose track of people, I'm sorry. Fix documentation bug. All right. Constant, okay. Constant like constant? Okay, this was a massive change to reorganize things to rewrite config files. Uh, about my git setup? I have GitHub. Most people want to know about the GitHub. And why not use the one built in? Oh, I do I have that in the git command yet? 
Okay, I don't have it in the git command yet, but I, I, knew, I need to make a note for that. There's a reason. Let me explain it after I make a note. Update git command regarding why not use VS code for VCS. So the reason I, I'll, I'll demonstrate why I don't use it. Uh, I need to get it into the situation where I would need to use it. Because I could use it for this root repository. It's when I have changes in sub repos I have a problem. Uh, so let's let's just abandon that for now, and I'll I'll demonstrate. So let's say I make a s example. See, it, this works, right? Has the same things. I could type it in here and commit. I I could. Well, let's say I made a change to my raft algorithm. I don't know. Let's make a random change here. Example. Look, watch what happens when I flip to this. It doesn't show up as needing to be checked in. I can go to Git Lens, and it will show that yes, there's a change there. But there's nothing in GitLens for me to check in. So I believe this problem is because of the weird way I set things up. I don't like to have one single Git repository for everything. I try to break things up so that, for example, I can distribute the RAF stuff to you guys through my GitHub. Or you might just want my hash algorithms, right? So it's under hash. Each of these is its own Git repository. And I don't like to use Git submodule because that ties your main repo to explicit commits of your sub repos. So I use the Google Android approach, which is I make a manifest that has, um, it's basically just a, an array of, um, in XML, just it's, it could be JSON. It's XML because it's a really old tool modeled off of Android, a uh, Google's repo tool for Android, where you just say what to clone, where to put it and what branch to use. And that's the key. I would like I want my main repo to reference branches, not commits for sub repos. So to make this fit into Git, um, if you don't add these subdirectories as submodules, it constantly complains saying it's untracked. So I shut that up by putting them in the Git ignore. But I think here's where I shoot myself in the foot. When I ignore all the sub repos from the main repo, I think it handicaps VS Code and a bunch of other tools into thinking, eh, we can ignore anything that you changed in Raft because you're ignoring Raft. So that's why I can't use the VS Code tool built in Git stuff. I'd like to. So I just resort, I just resort to doing stuff the old fashioned way, which is a command line or a external GUIs. Does the refresh button work? Nope, nothing works. Oh, that's not even the refresh button, that's debug. Where is the refresh? Any of these? That's synchronized changes. Refresh? Yeah, see, refresh, it just doesn't know that I changed that file. It has no clue. Um, and there are ways to, like, I could... I was fooling around with trying to add it as a source control provider. I just couldn't figure out how to do it. There's no way to, like, like add another repo explicitly that I know how to do. Yeah, Mesen build came up before too. That's an alternative to CMake. There's a way to set up VS Code for C. Have you seen the video I made, Constant? So this video about Google Test also has an intro about how to set up CMake, and that that would let you. Um, if you have, if you use the CMake and use CMake tools, it makes the build system for you and it supports C and C++. So that's one way you could do it, or you can go um, above Seagull's route and try something like Mesen build. Anyway, I'd like to use VS Code for checking in Git, but uh, kind of, I guess, shot myself in the foot. Uh oh. My shell isn't responding. What'd I do? I guess I'll kill it. Kill the shell. Open new shell. I should just press this button, right? I'll get it. There we go. Your problem is you have no idea what to do with the JSON files that get created. Uh, what JSON files do you mean? Like uh, the one that v the ones that VS Code makes? Like these ones? I just leave them alone. 
or you could some of them are kind of obvious like what standard and i think uh, c make tools sets some of the stuff up for you by the way uh launch config to to run programs is this what you mean the settings file i think i leave most of this stuff alone maybe there's some other json file that you that you mean this one was kind of important because uh VS Code couldn't, IntelliSense couldn't find all my headers until I told it, just search everywhere. Is there a way to automate that stuff? So every, if you do CMake tools, it's mostly automated. The only problem I had was I had to do this, this include path. I had to add that to uh, fix the um, IntelliSense for some reason. I think it's just a bug. Should be able to figure it out. All right. VS Code will show sub-modules if you add them. Yeah, but they have to be sub-modules. Yeah. I, I kind of start thinking maybe I should make my own uh, VS Code extension just to fit my weirdo style of doing multi-repos with, uh, with a repository. The Android Studio does work for my model, by the way. And I think it's because you, people use Android Studio to work on Android, and Android follows exactly my model. Uh, okay. Let's remove that example and go back to changing this code. So that that will say no longer raft has a change, right? Just a root. And if you if you want to know what this tool is, by the way, there's a something you can follow there. I have a I don't know how long that is, but maybe 10 minute video talking about this tool for using multiple Git repositories in a workspace. Smart Git C is just something I've been um, trying out as a replacement for uh, Git GUI. I've tried other things like tor Tortoise Git, Source Tree, GitHub Desktop, and they they all miss one or two things that I really like, so I didn't like them. Right, so this is all just the overhaul of the orchestrator, right? So uh, stage commit, and we say orchestrator. Hmm. Rebuild configs on change. So whenever a server reports a configuration change, actually, you know what we should do is only listen to the leader server, right? Yeah, right now it's being sent multiple times. Let me make a note of that. I need to think about that. Think uh, or consider only having messages sent to orchestrator from leader. Originally, I thought it, every server had to do that, but I changed things since then. I don't think I need to do that anymore. Whenever server reports a configuration change, I'll write out the new configurations for every server. Well, no, we don't do that. That's the second step. Whenever config server reports a configuration change, rebuild the map of known Realm servers. And then the second step is write out the, con the configuration current and next, possibly next, for every server uh, when launching them. Sounds fair. Commit that. Okay, see you, Kinkamatics. Enjoy your lurker status. Okay, so... I need to keep mindful of the time, because around 1 o'clock, which is why I put it in bold to remind me, I'm going to be playtesting another streamer's game. So I need to reserve some time for that. The question is, do I want to fix the problem in the coordinator, or do this... Um, stop one. Actually, we can. I can just change what I'm doing to test that right now. Now let's actually see what happens right now. Do you have to install any extra compilers with CMake? Um, it uses the ones you have installed. So when you first run it, it will ask you. It'll pop this up to select a kit. It tries its best to f locate what you already have. So I already had Visual Studio Community 2017 and Clang. So you probably don't need to install anything extra. It should just find them.
Yes. So right, I'm gonna I'm gonna try the a different config here, where we instead of adding a server, we're gonna remove one. We're gonna t we're gonna say goodbye to twelve in this example. All right. So rmrf. Hold on, that's dangerous. Don't do that. <laughs> Avoid rmrf. I'm just moving that off, and then we're gonna stage and serve, uh, not from that shell. This one. Okay, so we got three servers. And then let me um, select the new one. So the new one only has two in it. So when I upload that, it goes from... Well, that's interesting. Look at that. <laughs> it's, it's supposed to remove 12 from the mix. It actually got a lot farther than the other than the adding a server did. I need to kill that before it gets much further. Oh, and I lost the log. Oh well. <laughs> we should see it up here. It's mixed in with a lot of messages. Uh, where do we see it for the first one? Here we go. Going from ten eleven twelve to ten eleven. Oh, and then, okay, so the joint configuration got through. That's good. Actually, the question is, why does it keep reappending this one over and over and over again? I wonder if it's just a lag. And then f there's the finish, because it got committed. Okay, the orchestrator didn't recognize it. I think I know what the problem is. Server 12 is still running, and it thinks it, it still needs to be um, in the cluster. Probably, so it probably keeps starting a new election. Yeah. 12 said, let's start a new election. What's going on here? 10 timed out 2? Yeah, so it's 12 who keeps uh, disrupting the cluster. Yeah. Okay, I guess I should have expected that. He should be killed, but he's not. And he's not hearing back from 10 or 11, so he's like constantly raising a new election. So let me look at the config and see what that looks like. Oh. What happened here? Oh, is that because it's written by the executor? Probably. Yeah, see, the new config is gone. Oh, there you go. So it up, it it the cluster actually removed ten, eleven, no, twelve. So times the charm. It removed twelve correctly. That's cool. Look at that. So we have. But it's unfortunate the type is at the end, not at the beginning. So there's a start reconfiguration. There's a joint configuration, single configuration. So here it's going from ten, eleven, twelve to ten, eleven, and then there's a finish. Cool. So that actually worked. That so for ten's perspective, it worked. What about eleven? Okay, eleven got replicated correctly. Cool. There's even a backup copy of the old configuration. Look at that. Twelve is another matter, right? He stopped getting right. Actually, that's correct. He will stop getting changes when it's removed from the cluster. So he know, knew about the joint config. Actually, no, he should be getting, he should participate, he should participate in a single config. No, he won't. Because a majority, he doesn't need to be told anymore. Actually, this, so this is correct. But he's left hanging, thinking, oh, I, uh, I still need to be in the cluster. Because he's still in this config. Yeah, sorry, I, I know I wasn't reading chat. Let me catch up a bit. Ninja is greater than, I agree about Ninja being greater than Makefiles. I like Ninja, actually. I think Ninja comes with CMake tools, by the way. It can't compile and throws you IntelliSense nonsense? I didn't run into that. And you can compile from the command line. 
At least you can on Linux. I don't know about Windows. There's something weird about the win with Windows. Let me see if it's working these days. This should be a CMake build dot, and this is supposed to work. Yeah, this works on Linux though. I don't know why, but it doesn't work uh, for um, when you use CMake tools with Ninja on the command line. I, and I never really bothered to look into it because I'm just used to doing it this way now. I wonder if it has to do with the fact that you need to say that exactly. What if I do that? Copy. Paste. Okay, maybe, so, but the default CMake doesn't work. What, so what about this made it not work? Probably not the J18. It's probably not the target. Is it the config debug? No. Is it the path? Wait a second. That's exactly what I typed at the beginning. What? Strange. Oh wait, uh it might be because Ninja's okay until it tries to build something. Let me let me check that. Yes. So what let me go backwards here. Huh. Something with the environment, I guess. It must be some environment variable it sets, which is unfortunate because uh, I really can't see that. I know on Linux it works fine. So, so yeah, you should be able to run to build it on the command line. Guessing it's some kind of environment thing. Playing with scissors? Are you joking? You know what an exe file is. It's a file that holds your executive's personal information. Right? Yeah, because Windows. I'm just uh, uh, so used to Windows that um, I don't mind all these little quirks. Anyway, all the server stuff is going to be on Linux anyway. It's mostly just for my comfort that I run it on Windows. I do have a Linux box. It's sitting behind my Windows box, and I could remote to it. Do I mean your phone? <laughs> hmm. Interesting. Uh, okay. Let me get reoriented reoriented here. How they get comfortable? Um, get used to anything, any kind of harsh conditions over a, over a long period of time, right? I'll tell you what, playing with scissors. Uh, the challenge out there is to uh, find me a, a a debugger that's better than Visual Studio's debugger. If there was one on Linux that like blew away Visual Studio, like was just clearly superior, then I might seriously switch to Linux. Well, the other reason I stay, stay on Windows is all my games are on Windows. On, if I switch to Linux, I think I might lose some of the games. I'd have to ha keep a Windows box around to play the games anyway. No no better debugger? Yeah. Do I have it? I could have it. <laughs> I try to s at least retain the capability to switch to Linux or Mac at any time. I don't want to be locked in. Um, and I will switch if something annoys me too much. Right, you can run it. That's why I use it. But the debugger is not as good. Mm, okay, let me get reoriented here. Everything is, is checked in. Oh, right, the orchestrator doesn't know to stop. That's, yeah, that seems to be the gating factor now. It should just kill that server. Uh, when did I decide to do it? that were not in joint when single configurations in effect. So that that came about um how do I show this? Way up here, right? This received unrecognized message. 
before 12 times out. So as soon as we get this, we should really kill server 12 right now. Single configuration. Got it. So let's handle that. So main yeah, service.cpp joint config. Yeah. So single config. And where is it actually stored in? Just configuration. Okay. And next configuration, we're going to uh, just construct a new JSON value in its place, which so it's not valid anymore, and then build a new map. You don't use Mac because you're not rich. I, I think that is a good reason. Mac is not cheap, unless you get a refurbished one. And the only reason I really use Mac is I have a good friend who swears by it, and so I was just giving it its fair shake, and... Um, also, um, you can't, you can't, if you can afford it, you can't beat the Mac for uh, the laptop. The MacBook is just really... My experience has been a lot nicer to use a MacBook than to use any kind of PC laptop. Your experience may vary. Okay, I need to kill the old cluster, don't I? I should make a batch file for this. How would I do it in Windows? I know how to do it in Linux. I just use do rm dash rf. If I was in Windows, it's it's part of delete, right? Or is it del tree? Uh, I have to look this up. Oh, or directories. Force delete. Commander? Uh, no. I. So far, I haven't needed something like that. But I know about it. Uh, I just don't remember the syntax for this. Never... Dang it, I closed my Google window. Shouldn't do that. <laughs> um... <sighs> Windows command line delete tree. There we go. RM dash RF equivalent. Ah, so it's removed dir. Build orchestrator. Does that work? It did, so I'm going to take that and make a command line shortcut for it. Mm. Maybe I should just make it part of stage. No, no, I want to sometimes not blow it away, so I'll make a new file. W nuke. W nuke does that. Actually, I kind of want to do the same thing. So that I can run it from anywhere. So it's root. That's exactly what I want, right? Yes. All right. Let's try it. I screwed up somehow. Cannot find the file specified. Why not? CDBG and Code Clap are up and coming. I haven't heard of either one, so now I'm curious. You wrote the C program again and it says you can't locate the source file standard io.h. Ooh. Yeah, that means your tool chain isn't set up right. So that can be a tough issue. It depends on what you're if you're using CMake, then yeah, you might be that sucks. It should just work. But um, yeah, it, that's a build that's usually a, a setup issue for your tool chain.
Okay, let me see. Is this... Is this something I can't run in a batch file? Okay, yeah, it's it doesn't know to how to do that. Why? Because Hmm. Okay. Hey there, bug found. How's it going? Thanks, Buff Seagull. Oh Buff Seagull is so buff. All right, so what am I? Why can't I do that in a batch file? Is this? Is it just that you can't do rmdir in a command prompt? No. Oh, is it just because it doesn't exist? Q is supposed to quiet it. Oh, I see. Um then yeah, okay, it doesn't it doesn't exist. So there is a way to conditionally do this, right? I forget. I don't. I'm not a wizard in terms of command line stuff, so I got to look it up. Uh, Windows command prompt, um, or shell. Windows uh, shell. Um, if exists. There we go. So it would be. If I'm sorry about that, I accidentally hit the uh, the shortcut for muting my mic and all that stuff. Okay, exist this, I guess. Try that. And how do I silence it? Is it going to print that all the time now? Hmm. What does this do? Does it print that? I don't want it to print that. It's still printing it. Is it because it's uppercase? No. I don't want to dick around with this too much. Is it just echo off? And then I don't need to do this stuff. What was unexpected at this time? Oh. <laughs> is that is that all along? And I just wasn't uh, paying attention to you guys? Yeah, a buff seagull got it two minutes ago. Sorry. And bug fan told me to do echo off, yeah. Sorry, I just... I guess I'm in the habit of just figuring this stuff out on my own and I should be looking at chat more. Time to use PowerShell. So does that mean that this worked all along? I didn't need to do this? Yeah, so I could have just done that. I kind of prefer that. If I wanted to print something out, I, it will. So it was just that that's at exit all along. It's interesting that it actually makes it printed out. 
Anyway. Thank you guys. I will listen to you guys more carefully in the future. Alright, so... Back up to 3 server cluster. Tell it to go to 2. Huh. We're having still... I, didn't, I don't think it killed 12. It should have killed 12. Yeah, why didn't it kill... Why didn't you not killing 12 like I asked you? Joint configuration committed. Start committed reconfiguring cluster. Okay. This is sort of um, extra stuff. Maybe I don't need to see it anymore. It still looks good. Oh, I wanted to fix that too. Um, it just didn't kill 12. Not printing out enough. Oh, wait, okay, that tells me it didn't know to kill it before. It should have seen that it's no longer in the set. It's unless I did this wrong. It's supposed to remove it and then rebuild Oh, you know what? It doesn't remove ones that are that shouldn't be there. Okay, we got to be a little bit smarter about this. So, let's make a just a list of realms that are already in there. So, uh, that's uh known realm servers, right? So, standard set of What is that collection? Integers. Unique identifiers. Okay. Servers to keep. Or no, servers to kill. Keep or kill. Okay. So we're going to enumerate for const auto known server, known realm server in the known realm servers. We're just going to be a very pessimistic at first. Uh, insert known realm server first. Don't care about the return value. Okay, and then when we, um, when we build it, I guess I passed this in to update it. So these these two are going to collaborate. This is the set of realm servers. Mm. To be killed after the um, map is updated. It is uh, all servers um, updated in the map are removed from this set. So we just remove it. Erase uh, server ID. Okay, and then when we get down to the end, if there are any left, we're going to kill them. So for const auto, server to kill, and servers to kill, kill, server to kill, singular. Uh, okay, it really needs access to it. Okay, known. 
realm servers server to kill oh it's wait a minute recognize realm server that's not this map oh it is never mind okay and then reason no longer in con cluster configuration and then the diagnostics shared I uh, know we're already is shared diagnostics publisher right let me see if I did that right yes okay let's do it oh hold on um don't we want to remove it Oh, kill is not recognized? Oh, this, um... Hmm. This isn't shared. Yes. So kill should be shared as well. Right. So it really is more than doing more than building, isn't it? Hold on, I have an idea. Um can't get uh Trying to connect to an FTP and Elixir working? Eh, I only know one other guy who, d who does Elixir. Uh, that's Ubi, and uh, one of my uh, longtime viewers, and I don't know if he's here or, uh, or if he even knows how to do that. FTP, that's a pretty old protocol. FTP's been around a long time. So my idea is to delegate this to the caller again, so we can put this here. and then move it out. So that kind of moves together with that to the outer the outer place. Little known. So right here. So like this. But I kind of want one where we don't care, so let's make an overload with no, um, well, yeah, we have to make an overload where we just toss the set. So we kind of move that to here, and then we just call itself with that. This uh, construct. So this has no parameter. There we go. Constantly timing out, huh? What would cause a timeout? It's just a slow server? Hmm, I don't know. Weird. Right, we're so trying to try this now. S Nuke. Stage. Serve. Okay, and then admin console. Uh, we tell it, uh, let's log all the things and then say upload. Holy crap, I think it worked. Oh, wait a minute. It keeps launching it. It shouldn't be launching it. Oh, did I forget to do something? Yeah, I did. I forgot to actually remove it out of the set. It, we kill it, but we don't actually remove it from the set. We gotta kill it, and then uh, we gotta remove it from the set. Erase server to kill. Don't care. Nuke, stage, serve. Okay, 
I should probably make that sticky somehow. Okay, upload. Whoa. What happened? Eleven can't connect to oh it's still trying to connect to twelve. It shouldn't be. Um I wonder why. Ugh. Clumsy. I be clumsy. Okay, I got fifteen minutes left. Okay, that's good. That's good. <laughs> This shouldn't be here. Maybe it's just stale, though. I think it's just stale. I think we never delete this file when we're done, right? Yeah, we did everything in term one, which is great. It's just that it got confused afterwards. So 11 has a replicated state. Oh, wait a minute. That's not right. Eleven doesn't have the correct new configuration. Huh. How did that happen? So what does 11 have to say? It received the start. It received another, I guess that's a, a um, it received a, 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 another copy of it. There. Received a third copy of it. No, this is another one. So we've got the joint configuration. It committed the first one. So it told its raft that we're reconfiguring, which should be ignored because it's not the leader. Oh, wait a minute. Why is 11 doing this? 11 shouldn't be doing this. Huh. 10 is the leader, right? Yeah, 10 is the leader. Maybe this is the problem. Server 11, which is a follower, it's telling its raft to... Uh, to go into a joint consensus, but, or, yeah, to remove it, but it shouldn't be, right? It's only supposed to do that if it's a leader. Okay, anyway, it received another one, which was joint config, so it re received another joint config again. It's got a, getting a lot of retransmits, I think, because it's just laggy. I should probably reduce the timeouts just so it doesn't have to retransmit so much. Laggy because it's debug mode and all that good stuff. Mm. Getting a lot of copies of this joint con joint config. Here's where the orchestrator got it, so it went ahead and killed it. Okay, here's where it's for, it receives this start config. One entry's building on two from term one. That's correct. Because the uh, the journal is, that's one and that's two. So this is the, the single config, right? So it, it it's committed. Yeah, it's, uh, well, hold on. Why would it commit it right away? Oh, no, the first two are committed. This is the third one, so it's not yet in, yeah. Keep getting confused because it's one based. These are all retransmits. There's a ton of them. Okay, here's where it commits the single configuration. And it receives the finish. That makes sense. And then that finish, what does it do with it? It's supposed to, it's, it's, when it gets committed, it's supposed to then update this configuration. Maybe that's just not happening. We time out. Maybe that's the problem. We time out and we haven't committed that yet. That's why. So we had a, we had an election timeout happen 
before that could finish. And that's one of my corner cases I'm not handling. When a, It'll eventually elect a new leader. Right here. Actually, it became leader. What it should have done is commit that finish that it got. But I don't think it ever did. Let me see. Yeah, it's okay. It's gonna come. It's gonna keep trying to talk to twelve, uh, because it doesn't know any better. It becomes a leader though. Yeah, and it just kept trying to talk to it. So it just never, it never committed that um, that last entry. It's interesting. I don't see any messages about it sending heartbeats to ten. Oh wait a minute. Um. I turn those off. It's not. It's only going to show when it actually sends something. It's never going to send anything, but it should have at least done a heartbeat. Oh, wait, it won't update its commit because it's in a new term. Right. Okay, that's a flaw. That was in the algorithm too. Uh, let me show that. This is important. Stuff wrapped. It's when they mention no wop. Okay, I think he mentions it more than once. Right. At the start of a term, a leader may not know which those are, those being which, uh, which entries are committed. So to find out, it needs to commit an entry from its term. So we're supposed to commit a blank no-op entry at the start of the term. So if, if we had done that... The other server would have responded saying yes, and then we would have said, okay, good, then we can commit the final configuration, or final finish reconfiguration. Then it would have removed 12 and stopped trying to talk to it, and then we would have been good, right? Because that was the only real problem left. It was trying to connect to 12, and it never gave up. The orchestrator n knew not it didn't need to anymore. Cool. That's the last step, and I don't have enough time to, fin to fin finish it now. So let me just write that down. So need to need new leader to uh, append no op log entry when it begins its term in order to uh, finish committing log entries from previous terms. Otherwise, uh, we may get stuck. In, um, in places such as finish reconfiguration. So that was one thing. No, what was the other thing I needed? There were some, there were some corner cases that I already have marked as to-dos, but there was something else, wasn't there? It connects if you hard code the IP address. Oh, that's a DNS problem then, right? Another thing it could be, I don't remember the FTP protocol, but some protocols like, for example, HTTP, you will um, not. You will use the the host name or IP address in two places: one at the socket layer to make the connection, and then and then again at the upper level protocol layer. And it could be that the server got the host name and said, "Well, I'm not that host, so go away," um, or it might have just like just ignored the connection. So it could be something like the name. The server doesn't accept the name, but if you use the IP address and the server is getting then the IP address as part of the handshake, it might be saying, yeah, I'm that guy, so I accept it. That'd be my guess. So, need a new leader to append no... no oh, the other thing was, uh, it was mentioned here too, in the section about... Uh, yeah, section six, chapter 6, where was that? Six. Where are you? Six. Here, six. See, we're we're doing this correctly. Okay, this is what we're doing. I think it's this third issue, right? Removed servers can disrupt the cluster. They don't receive heartbeats, so they might time out. Yeah. So, this was definitely happening before when the orchestrator wasn't killing it in time. Right now the orchestrator kills it before it can do this, but we should probably do this. We will, um, so to prevent it, we disregard request votes when we have a current leader. So that's exactly what we'll do. So dis, disregard request 
vote uh, RPCs um, if they arrive before, what is it, within the minimum election timeout. Timeout since the last message from the leader. And I suppose the leader ignores it completely, right? I know, I think it applies to the leader. So since the last message to from the leader, so if it is the leader, it's the last time it sent a message. They need to do that. And then I guess the only thing left would be, um, I, I don't remember what it is, but when we um, go the other direction, actually what happens is it, it should be stable now, right? If I start up the cluster immediately, it should start with two servers in it. No, it starts with three. Shoot. That's not good. That's, I forgot to do that. So that's another thing. Orchestrator should um, update its own config file uh, once transition to a single configuration is made. Yeah, it makes sense. So I'm not doing that. Let's let me hard code that for now. So that would be in here. It's got its own config file right here. So if I remove server 12, everything should start out hunky dory, right? With two servers. Now why are they not able to make a leader? What's going on? What's going on with 11? It got stuck? Apparently 11 stuck. What's 11? Oh, 11 couldn't replicate the state. That's why. I could fix that for now. So let's fix... No, 11's good. What's going on here? Ooh. Oof. That's another bug. That's a trunk... A failure to truncate. So... Orchestrator needs to truncate files it writes. Truncate or clean out files it write. Clean out old contents of files it writes. I don't think that's affecting it though. He figured it out. It was interfacing with Erlang and was expecting a ch character list instead of uh, F8 string, whatever that is. Nice, I'm glad you figured it out. Dory is a hunk, hunky Dory. I wonder why 11 is not starting correctly. It should. I wonder if it's going through and... Oh, that's right. That's another thing I needed to do. Um, need to include a log index in configuration. Actually, I think it already is in there. Uh, it's just not where we're just not using it. No, it's not even in there. I think I meant to put it in there. I might have put it in the main one. Let me see. No, I don't even see it. I don't see it anywhere. Okay. You need to include logins indexing configuration file and it, and it's basically uh, anything that looks at it. Ig ignore commands. Ignore configuration commands. Uh, uh, from uh, when replaying the log or entries before the one noted in the config file. In other words, we need to make those commands idempotent, which is a cool word, by the way. They're not idempotent right now. They'll be it, probably 11 reapplied it and got confused. Um, yeah, that's my guess. Let me go back to a three server config, which would be if I just nuked it, right? And then uh, add this back in. So nuke stage serve. And then let's try, let, just to, so I can remember what I um, needed to do for adding a server case. So upload a new. Right, so upload.
Hold on. Why that should have worked. Oh right. Um hmm. Yeah, I think I might know why. It doesn't know to look at that. So that yeah. I do need to write that down. Coordinator. I should uh look at both current and next configuration when uh, uh, looking for its server configuration. If in the next configuration only, it's a non-voting member during a configuration transition. That's a, a note. Well, that's a sub-bullet. Oh, I got to hit enter and then tab. There we go. All right, so I got notes of things I'm going to work on tomorrow, which will be these. Uh, made good progress today. I think I'm able to actually almost completely remove a server from the cluster. It gets a little bit into adding the new one, but the new one doesn't quite start up right. But I'm going to stop it here and uh, transition to playtesting John's... Uh, John Games is a game called Roots, and I need to uh, go off stream here to uh, send him a message saying that I'm about to go do that. Hold on a sec. He's not online right now, so he might miss the beginning, or he's invisible. Hey, John, I'm just about to start streaming your game. I, I hope you're online and available. So hopefully he's on his way or he's here already. Uh, I'm going to take a short break and come back and play some games, all right? So, yeah, normally at this point I'd wrap it up. Actually, probably what I'll do is I will um, stop the stream and then restart it so I get a new recording and a new uh, title. So I'll be back in a few minutes, so don't go anywhere uh, unless you don't want to see games. Uh, I'm going to stop the stream and then restart it with a new title for John's game. So be right back.